greetings to all of you who have joined for Rights of Nature and Earth Democracy. I have grown up in a culture where the earth is Mother Earth. She's Bhumi, she's Vasundara. But every culture, every indigenous culture has seen the earth as sacred, has seen Mother Earth as living. Mother Earth is Terra Madre, Gaia, Pachamama, Vasundara, and emerging ecological sciences are making us recognize that the Earth is alive. That's why she was named Gaia by James Lovelock. She is self-organized, creative. She gives us life. And we are part of the Earth. You're not separate from her. We are not her masters, we are not her owners. We are one member of a beautiful earth family. In Indian philosophy, we talk about this family as Vasudeva Kutumkam. Vasundara is the earth, Kutumkam is a family. And an ancient saying says that anyone who thinks so-and-so is a friend and so-and-so is an enemy, so-and-so is below me and so-and-so is above me. This is a very petty mind. The evolved mind recognizes the whole earth is one family with no discrimination, no hierarchies. The UN recognized that we need to redefine our relationship with the earth. I remember on 20th of April, two days before Earth Day in 2011, the UN General Assembly organized a conference on the harmony with nature. And as the UN Secretary General in his reports on harmony with nature elaborated that the imperative of the route back to the future is reconnecting with nature. When the Copenhagen summit on climate failed, President Eva Morales of Bolivia took the initiative to start talking about the rights of Mother Earth. And this declaration on the rights of Mother Earth was drafted by citizens from around the world. I feel very privileged that I was part of that process. And it was conceived of as complementary to the UN Declaration on Human Rights. As this declaration adopted in April 2010 at the World People's Conference on Climate Change and the Rights of Mother Earth begins, we the peoples and nations of the earth. And the key principles of the rights of nature and the rights of the earth begin with Mother Earth is a living being. Mother Earth is a unique, indivisible, self-regulating community of interrelated beings that sustains, contains, and reproduces all beings. Earth being is defined by its relationships as an integral part of Mother Earth. The inherent rights of Mother Earth are inalienable in that they arise from the same source as existence. Mother Earth and all her beings are entitled to all the inherent rights recognized in the Declaration without distinction of any kind such as may be made between organic and inorganic species, origin, used to human beings or any other status. Just as human beings have human rights, all other beings have their rights, which are specific to their species or kind and appropriate to their role and function within the communities in which they exist. The rights of each being are limited by the rights of other beings, and any conflict between their rights must be resolved in a way that maintains the integrity, balance, and health of Mother Earth. This has been the human learning across diverse cultures. And this is what you will share at the forum, inspired by all the teachers who will join. But it is also the awakening in the scientific community that the earth is living every organism in her from the microbes to the tiniest uh, plant and herb 
to ecosystems and the seed on which I work, to the planet as a whole. And I see climate change as a disruption of the Earth's capacity to heal herself, to organize herself. The Earth, through her living process over 4 billion years, brought down the temperature from 290 degrees to 13 degrees, brought down the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere from 98% to 0.03% through the miracle of living system, the photosynthesis of plants, drawing down the amazing energy of the sun, which is why we worship the sun, transforming through photosynthesis, the carbon dioxide into the carbohydrates, the molecule of life that gives us life, our food, our fiber, and the oxygen we breathe. We are the earth. We wouldn't be alive if the earth didn't give us breath and the plants didn't give us oxygen. We're alive because the soil and the sea gives us food. We wouldn't be alive if the water that circulates across this planet didn't provide us the water that quenches our thirst. The planet is 70% water, our bodies are 70% water. And in every culture, water is sacred, the soil is sacred, biodiversity is sacred, and the earth as a whole is sacred. This thinking of the sacred earth was interrupted with the rise of mechanistic philosophy, which went hand in hand with colonialism, which hand in, went hand in hand with the rise of greed. The mechanistic philosophy treats the earth as dead. That's what Bacon tried to teach. He said, I have come to you to teach you how to make the earth your slave. Or Robert Boyle, who said, the idea of veneration of nature is an impediment in man's empire over lesser creatures. So the empire building instinct of domination and conquest, which is the root of all violence, cannot deal with the idea of a self-organized living earth with rights. The earth has rights, nature has rights, then we have to put limits on our use of nature. So the rights of the earth is a guidance to human action. It's a guidance of recognizing that when humans are alive because of the earth and all humans are equal in their right to life, then any discrimination within the human community and within the earth community is ethically, ecologically, epistemologically unjustified. I talk about Earth democracy as the democracy of all life, the freedom of all life to evolve, the freedom of all life to evolve in togetherness because we are not alone. We exist because of symbiosis. Plants exist because the bees create the next generation of plants through pollination. The seed becomes a plant and gives us food because the soil microorganisms, including the mycorrhizal fungi, carry nourishment to the plant. And the plant in turn gives food to the mycorrhizal fungi. So the world is alive in symbiosis, in mutuality, in giving. And the overreach of greed has created the sickness of anthropocentrism, the idea that humans are superior to nature and the idea that some humans are superior to other beings. I have called this ecological apartheid, which is related to the apartheid regime, which thought just the color of the skin gives the right to some people to dominate over other people. The alternative to this apartheid that has brought ecological destruction of the planet and violence between people is recognizing that we are one humanity on one planet rich in diversity, but one in the interconnectedness of both life, rights, and our duties to the earth. 
It is a beautiful moment to be born in, in spite of the catastrophes we live through. In fact, the catastrophes and collapse around us is a wake up call to redefine our relationship with the living earth, to wake up to her amazing generosity and abundance, recognize her limits that she puts on our actions and together celebrate the sacred earth as the conditions of our being. As the beautiful prayer for peace from India says, may the peace of the skies, may the peace of the air, may the peace of the plants, may the peace of the waters, may the peace of the soil and the land, may that peace be with you. I send you greetings of peace with the earth.